And it's backhanded to the doorstep, and Iowa picks it off. They survive the Hayhurst and Andreev rush. Here comes Hughes. He shoots, he scores! Riley Hughes! Iowa leads 1-0. The crowd goes wild! And here's a takeaway from Jocks. What a play. It's a 2-on-0. Jocks, Novak, he scores! Pavel Novak, what a moment! Jacob Graves hums it to net front backhander. Ah, what a glove save! Drew to Ritter, his save of the night. Here comes McKernan, one on one. He scores! His first of the season! And that was a beauty. We're tied. Good keep by Jake Wall, and he gets it over to the left slot. Oh, a pad save! What a second denial by Peyton! Dylan Boucher and Pinio were there, but they couldn't score, and it's to center. Look at him there, winning a puck battle. Jordan Bach, Gavin Hayne, he scores! That was creative, Iowa leads 1-0. And for the final time this season, it's a perfect ending for Iowa. 7-4, they swap Kansas City and end their nine-game winning streak. In front of the first sellout ever in this building, Iowa does it for their home faithful. It's been a party all day at Extreme Arena. The pregame tailgate, thousands of people were outside Extreme Arena on this wonderful mid-April day. Even Dash out there showing off maybe what he'll be doing a little bit more of in the offseason. The food, the drinks, the hockey, the celebration. That is Fan Appreciation Night. Coralville is center stage in the hockey world here in Iowa tonight. And it's the Iowa Heartlanders and the Kansas City Mavericks. Can't wait here on MediaCom MC22. Going to be an awesome night here at Extreme Arena as the fans make their way through the entrances here. It's already kind of been a full day in eastern Iowa right here at the brand new Iowa River Landing. And it's Iowa and it's Kansas City as the topper of it all at 6 o'clock p.m. sharp here on Mediacom MC22. And welcome on up to the booth alongside Chris Peters. My name's David Fine, Fan Appreciation Night. Chris, final game of the year. It feels like a special one at Extreme Arena. Happy Friday, it's the Iowa Heartlanders and it's the Kalamazoo Wings and we're counting you down to puck drop here on the Mediacom, Keys to Victory. And for the Heartlanders, certainly defensive consistency has played a major theme in the team's turnaround over the last few weeks. Iowa rides a four-game point streak, tied for their longest since a franchise record nine-game point streak earlier this season. And they're taking on the division rival Cincinnati Cyclones in what shapes up to be a key couple games here on Friday and Saturday. He's cross division foes and not cross division foes up in the booth. David Fine and Chris Peters with you getting set to go. But hey, Chris, even though these teams don't play in the same division, a lot of physicality, yep. a lot of fun when these teams get together. Absolutely. We've seen it a few times already this year. We saw it last year as well and as we get set to drop the puck on the second period. It's getting loud here. This is not the kind of atmosphere that is conducive for the broadcasters to sit all game. We have been standing, as have some of the fans for a lot of this game as well, and the cheerleaders that are here from the University of Iowa. Getting the crowd riled up. It's a great showing of what the Heartlanders hope this building will become over the next few years under the new ownership group that joined the Heartlanders late in the summer. Iowa had the pregame tailgate, thousands of people outside. Boudon shoots it and into the back safety mesh for a face-off. Chris, you and I had a chance to go to the tailgate, and my goodness, there were 2,500 2500 people registered ahead of time and said, I will be there. 2,500, yeah. which is remarkable because it wasn't you didn't have to fill it out to go. They said, we're going to be there. Yeah. Iowans love a good tailgate. Yeah, that, I mean, that's you got to have a good tailgate. I mean, I, the, the smells of all the food that was available out there, pretty amazing. And just what a great environment. I hope that's how we start the season next year and, and maybe have a few more when the weather's warm. Yuki backhands and a pad save by LaFontaine. Huge hit on Jacob Hayhurst as well. Rattled them. Hayhurst, a really accomplished player in his own right. Career high goals and points this season. McKenna slithers one and blocked by Luca Hano's armpit. McKenna, though, takes it right back. Another D-zone turnover, and Kansas City's best lines is out there. Hano buries himself, kind of. Ian McKenna grappling up. The referee turns around. Hano lets go. It's iced by Iowa. 
I think Luca was going to take him down, and then he realized the ref was staring right at his face. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, that's a veteran move then for for a young guy in the league uh, to, to to be aware of that. But yeah, I mean, you know, it, these two teams certainly have had no love lost for each other, and for not being divisional rivals, you know, they are very close in proximity to each other. And, uh, you know, I, I just think that there's certainly some bad blood brewing here. Kanepke centers it. Iowa blocks it away with Luka. Kanepke rattles it out back towards center ice for his teammate Patrick Curry. Nick first in the reload. Mavericks have the puck. Minute and a half almost gone in the second period. And the swiggle through from Curry and the shot is gloved down. And we'll get a face up. Patrick Curry driving in. Aiming at top shelf, and there's to Ritter. Yeah, absolutely crafty goal-scoring maneuver here as Curry kind of uses the defenseman as a bit of a screen here. As he pulls that puck wide, and that's hard for the goalie to pick up. As we saw, Drew kind of reacted a little bit late to it, but DeRitter was able to get the glove on it and get the whistle. Kansas City. Curry, Borchert, and Nolan Walker. Two of the guys on this line are in the top five of the league in goals. Kanepke down to Kate Borchardt, who's leading all rookies in points, but not above 30 goals yet. <laughs> and now we get Kansas City coming in a little bit off, so face off back out. Second offside on KC. Yeah, Curry's arguing that he didn't touch it, but at the same time, he made a play on the puck, which really should be offside, even if he doesn't touch it. Uh, so I mean I, I don't I don't mind that call from the linesman there. And it'll be a face-off just outside the zone. And what takes the puck? Light to Justin Wells and up through center ice, delivered in by Adam Goodsir. How sweet would it be if Adam Goodsir can break out of this scoring drought tonight? His parents in attendance gets the puck to Riley Hughes and tipped away. Adam, a very strong defensive forward throughout his career, but he has not scored in two and a half months. Shot going wide. Casey gets the establishment with Kelvis, the veteran, for the goal line for the accelerating Koski. Cross ice, McPherson, and the cycle around for David Kahn on an AHL deal with the Coachella Valley Firebirds. Wells on an ECHL contract wraps him up. Rahani straddles the line, feeds the high slot. Rahani Elaine now. Towed away by DeRitter. Great denial. Almost off the skate. I did just get a piece of it. But Riley Hughes ragging it out to center like that as well to get the Heartlanders some better field position. You know, Iowa football offensive coordinator Tim Lester was in the building last night. So when we're using field position, you know, we're, we're trying to impress. <laughs> we're trying to impress Mr. Lester, who's a big Kalamazoo Wings fan. A shot. Iowa scores! Jake Durflinger! Iowa retakes the lead! Get a big smile there from Jake Durflinger, and why not? What a play by the Heartlanders to catch Kansas City napping. And the Denver Pioneer, as his alma mater is playing right now for a national championship, he is getting in on the act here in Coralville. It's 2-1, Harlanders, and a great play there. Nice job by Johnny Sorensen to get that puck to the middle. And Durflinger just had an easy tap in all alone to give the Harlanders a 2-1 lead. And like we said, they needed to have a hot start to the period. They've done that here by getting the go-ahead goal. 240 of it. Durflinger from Brinkman and Sorensen. Jake Durflinger, his eighth of the season, but he has missed a lot of time due to injury. Hit 10 goals last season. Most of his goals came late. Back around March and April of last season. So second half, how he likes it. Here's Sorensen. A swagger. A shot. And a glove save. And now Knockbar and Sorensen are tied up in the corner. And some smiles from at least one of the fellas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Johnny Sorensen, who was a teammate of Jack LaFontaine's back at the University of Minnesota. Trying to beat his old teammate glove side there, but LaFontaine was able to get that one. But I love that move at the offensive blue line by Johnny Sorensen to get the to get some room for himself and create a scoring opportunity. 
after setting up the last goal. That was against one of the league's best defenders in Mark Olivier Touquet. Masters patted away. Coughlin. Latchman standing next to him. Ian Curry tied up. Those two had some interesting interactions in Independence, Missouri. And now it's iced by the Mavericks and a face-up.